Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday this week with Dov Tsal. Hi, Dov. Welcome back. Hi again. So, Dov, on Tuesdays, we talk about teams. But before we dive into that, share with us what might have been one of the books that most influenced you in your career as a Scrum Master. Uh, This is a really, really easy question. I came across a book that uh, sort of changed my life about five years ago, which is called The Agile Tao by Peter Merrill, which is a very thorough, serious and interesting refactoring of the Book of Tao. If you don't know what's the Book of Tao, just look it up. There's, I think, thousands of versions. And the Agile Tao is a refactoring of the Book of Tao, not into another language, but into agility. And it talks about Taoism from an Agile point of view. I do a podcast about this with Peter Merrill, where every time we take a small poem and we dive into it and try to understand if someone gets this poem, what will change in their life? What will change in the way they run the company, how they run their process, the, the HR, how do they change the recruitment process, stuff like this. A really fascinating book. So I highly recommend it. You can't buy it in paper form. You can get it on LeanPub. And I I can't recommend it more warmly there than I just did. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely, and, we'll put the link uh, on the show notes just to make yeah. sure that uh, everybody gets uh, uh, or, or visits that page and also to the podcast so that they they can hear how you guys discuss and, and uh, uh, understand and explore the learnings from the book. Yeah, and if you don't mind, I, I can read a short segment from the book. So uh, this is chapter 19, Mindset. Agility is practical, not mystical, a way of working, not a state of grace, listening as if crossing thin ice, testing as if surrounded by danger, learning as in a strange land, simplifying as thawing snow, integrating as the deep woods, leading as the river valley, innovating as the spring silt. Imagine the ice solid or the stream stream clear. Stop to plan your way ahead. Ignore what moves underfoot. You fall and disappear. So that's a sample. If it intrigues you, get the book. Absolutely. And the link will be on the show notes. So Dov, now we turn our attention to teams and how sometimes they create their own storms to take on the <laughs> the guidance of the Book of Tao. Um, and, and we want to dive especially to those origins, right? So where do those uh, anti-patterns come from? How do they develop? So walk us through that process. Tell us about the team, a little bit about the context, and walk us through those steps that the anti-pattern went through and developed over time and ultimately led to problems in the team. Yeah, so, so I don't necessarily see it as anti-pattern. I see it as, um, like, most of the time when there is a team problem, it doesn't stem for me from the team. It stems from the clash between the team and the intention of whoever implements the process. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, if you say you should do Scrum, but you don't allow the team to choose how they do it, then there is something wrong with, with the intention. The congruency is not good. Okay. If you say the PO should have the ownership of the backlog, but the PO is being dictated what to do, then the process w- will grow up to a level and then crumble. If you say uh, uh, there is only one role, which is a team member, but in fact there are more than one, right? There is the, the I don't know what, the, 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 the tech lead, 
nice terminology, right? And there are the QA, and there is some hierarchy there in the team. There are sub teams in the team. It will not work. So the way I see it, it's not that anti patterns evolve, anti patterns emerge. When you try to apply something in a I wanted to say non-honest, but I don't think it's about honesty because I think a lot of times people who insist on a process don't fully understand the contract that they're signing. Is it clear enough or is it too vague? No, I think it is very vague for me. So I would like to explore <laughs> it a little bit further. So I understand the conflict that emerges from somebody pushing whatever, right? Like, for example... Dear product owner, you're fully responsible for the product. Oh, by the way, you can't decide what goes into the backlog. We will tell you what goes into the backlog. Okay, I, there's a conflict there, yeah. right? Like Scrum says the product owner has a specific role. And if the product owner can't decide what goes in the backlog, then it, it's a totally different role. It's no longer the product backlog role. Uh, I also understand when, uh, and I'm sure that many of our listeners have done that. I have done that myself. When I bring Scrum to a team, and I try to tell them, here's how you do Scrum, but don't spend enough time listening to what, what is it that they're struggling with, which might not even be process at all. In some cases, it isn't. So I, I understand that, that contrast. But uh, it's still unclear for me what do you mean by what emerges after. Like conflict, uh, there is conflict in, in many situations. Process is just one expectations of roles, like all the time we hear about roles and responsibilities. That's a sign of conflict in the definition or understanding of those roles and responsibilities. But what happens after? Yeah. So uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, we, we have a team and we, uh, we teach them, teach, uh, that uh, we have a stand up every day. And every day someone answers these uh, three questions. What did I do yesterday? What do I, do I want to do today? And what, uh, what impediments do I have? What blocks me? And uh, it sucks. It sucks. You know, it, even if it's 15 minutes by the book and everyone stands around the board or no, electronic board, so everyone sits, whatever, it, it's, a, it's a horrible meeting. And part of the reason it's a horrible meeting is because... No one cares about what the other people do. And the reason no one cares is because there was no empowerment of the team to take things as a team. Because I am responsible for the database and you are responsible for the QA. And these are our roles. This is the hat that, that, that uh, the HR put on us. And I don't even dare think about doing your role or you, you dare doing mine. So, so the system that... It put this process in place didn't make but what the, you're, the ground what you're, around. What you're saying is basically that everything is potentially going to be a conflict unless it is created by the people who are doing the work. But that, of course, raises another question. And that question is, where do we start? Because the yeah. moment you enter as a Scrum Master a team, all of that is already there. Like what you say is bad is already there. The meetings are there, the structure is there, the expectations are there, the push from management towards the product owner is there, the different roles in the team are there. So as Scrum Masters, we need to be able to navigate that. So what do you do, Dov, when you get into a team and all of that is already there, all of that conflict potential is already in place? Yeah. So one thing that is important is to speak the truth. To say what you to to acknowledge what you see, to say, listen, this meeting, if we're in the middle, is boring. This meeting doesn't serve your purpose. How come? Perhaps you know what? Let's give up. And, and there was a, a great experiment that, that I did once. I said, let's stop with the stand-ups. Let's have one sprint with no stand-ups. Would you like that? Sure, we would. And then they came back to it, but it helped rearrange the team. But another thing which is more important is when you start your role, do an inventory. Clarify to whoever got you there what is the contract and see if you want to change the contract. Right. So uh, tell them we have uh, only one role, team members. Is it true in the case of the project that I'm entering into? 
we have something called the product owner who owns the product. That's why it's called the product or she called the product owner. Is it true in your case? Who decides on the priorities? Does the product owner have a clear enough vision? Does the company, by the way, have a clear enough vision? So it, whatever you clarify before you enter gives you a much stronger leverage when you start. After you're there for half a year, it's too late to challenge drastically the system you're in. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great tip, right? Like when you start, of course, w one thing that you said that I think needs to be even said, you know, emphasized and, and even done explicitly is what is the contract we have when we come in? Like, what is it that is expected of me? And am I ready to accept that? because we might not be ready to accept it. And then the other aspect of doing the inventory, like what are the expectations in place? How do the team members expect each other to behave and the structure to be? How does the product owner expect their ownership of the backlog to be? I think that's a, a, a great tip that can not only prevent problems later on, which you already mentioned, but can also tell us where to start. Like where, where do we even start as the conversation, right? Like what is the first topic I would like to talk to the product owner and what is the first topic I would like to talk to the team and, and doing that inventory and of course our own reflection based on our experience will help with that too. And another team that I would give to anyone who starts as a scrum master is find your community inside and if you can't find it, create it. Who are your partners? Who will you have a, a talks uh, over coffee about what's not going well or what is going well or what's the politics in, in your environment. Often there are communities like that and you have to find them. Uh, they're not always explicit. Or but if you don't find them, them, yes. And that's, if you don't find them, create them, create them. Be, be yeah. the, the, the also grain because of that's time. an important part of our own self care, right? Like if, if we put ourselves into a corner and, and uh, isolate ourselves, it's only going to make our job harder and more frustrating. Yes, absolutely. Great tips. Thank you for sharing that Tov. Total pleasure. Tuesday is team day here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, but tomorrow we talk about something that goes beyond the work we do with the teams. We will talk about how to lead change and what our guests have learned from leading and participating in change programs during their career. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.